تدركه الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار وهو السميع البصير لا تخفى عليه في السماوات والأرض خافية وأشهد أن سيدنا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الواحد الأحد مالك الملك يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب ومن يتوكل على الله فهو حسبه وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أرسل على فترة من الرسل وقلة من العلم وضلالة في الناس من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له Brothers and sisters in Islam, there is an area of Islam that is kept in the dark. And this area of Islam that is kept in the dark has to do with the power of determination of the Muslims. It is within the history of the humankind of battles and confrontations and wars predominate this history of man and of, co and of course Allah who created man knew that which is within the nature of man his inclination towards hostilities and unfriendly encounters and bloodshed and the Muslims did not make their debut in this world except when they understood the Prophet والسلام, saying اليد العليا خير من اليد السفلى والمؤمن القوي خير وأحب إلى الله من المؤمن الضعيف the giving hand is preferable in the sight of Allah than the receiving one and the strong and powerful Muslim is preferable in the sight of Allah and is more favored than the weak one. Upon this initiative and this understanding, the Muslims stepped into the arena of this world. When combat was a necessity of life, they underwent combat. When fighting, of the lifestyle they found themselves in. They fought courageously and boldly. They did not withdraw with an inferior complex into a secluded idea that Islam does not challenge these issues with the same language of these issues. This is a fact of life. It so happens to be that combat and war have their impression and impact and results on the course of human life more than an abundance of theories and lectures and the rest of the verbiage that really has any impact upon the destiny of man. It should be understood by all that are listening. And this is not a matter of jumping to conclusions. It is a matter of deducting and deducing from the lessons that are afforded to us by the powers around us that are affecting us collectively and individually. 
individually. It should be understood that the rights that belong to human beings are not served to individuals or to societies on a plate of silver or gold. These rights have to be extracted by the accompanying use of force, not because Muslims are thirsty for the use of force and the consequences of the use of this force, but because that is the only language that the usurpers of the rights of man understand. How many human and civil rights issues plague the societies of this world near and far? And how many legitimate arguments defend the positions of those deprived and dispossessed individuals and societies? As elaborate as these arguments may be, and lodged as deeply as they may be within the institutions of the status quo, there is no response to these legitimate echoes of the voice of the human conscience. What do we see happening to the condition of man? Aren't there hundreds of tons of foodstuffs, grain, vegetables, and fruits, and sugar, and potatoes, all of these foodstuffs dumped into the seas for what? When we have a good segment of the human race deprived and disinherited, why do we have this happening? Don't they have the rights to enjoy a square meal as every other human being and individual has that same right? But at the same time, the nurturing and nourishing material of life is dumped into the ocean. All the wastelands is put to fire. And these people can go on starving, dying of and hunger. In other environments, but on the whole, this is what we are facing today. And some of us within these shifting winds and sands that we find ourselves in, some of us are easy to criticize those who are breaking new grounds, who take upon themselves some things that they want to do. Of course, they are vulnerable to mistakes, but you don't hang your brother in Islam for a mistake that he has done when this mistake is within the reference of breaking new ground. You try to help him. You try to correct him. You try to be with him. And you try to shoulder this responsibility yourself if you think your brother does not shoulder the responsibility sufficiently or the way you think or the other Muslims think should be the case and why should, be, should there be a lack in dialogue among the Muslims why are not we confident and this once again harkens back to the initial issue why are not why are we not confident to open our minds and our hearts up to our brothers when the enemies of Islam are banking on this la lack of confidence? We are mature. The years have evolved us into positions by which we should be as candid and as blunt, if need be, with each other as the circumstances merit. And we should continue with this effort of ours with reliance upon Allah and with an open hand to our brothers in our ranks and in our files as well as those who are outside.
For the guidance does not belong to a certain group of people. A guidance cannot be monopolized. We cannot fall into the historic mistake of Bani Israel when they monopolized guidance for, for themselves and did not open up to the rest of the people. And hence their experience has been referred to in the Quran so many times. Do not overlook the instructions and the guidelines of the Quran and do not fall into the mistakes of those who have preceded and fell into these same mistakes. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt wa aathina fi man aathayt wa tawallana fi man tawallayt wa barik lana fi ma aathayt wa qina sharra ma qadayt fa innaka taqdi wa la yuqda alayk wa innahu la yadillu man walayt wa la ya'izzu man aadayt tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayt فلك الحمد على ما قضيت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وصلى الله على محمد وآل محمد اللهم بك نحاول وبك نصاول وبك نقاتل اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من أن نشرك بك شيئا نعلمه ونستغفرك لما لا نعلمه اللهم إنا نعوذ بكلماتك التامات من شر ما خلقت والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأرحنا بها Thank you.